Hello and welcome to a review of another uh, Pokemon ID tag um, figure set. This time it's um, the. Is there actually a name for this set? No, although according to that it's a four figure gift set. Um, and this is from series one. Again, there are different size sets it seems. This one I bought in Toys R Us for £15. And we'll take a look at it at the figures in a second. As you can see in the front are the four Pokemon you get. Uh, Kyrem, Stunfisk, Imolga and Terrakion. Um, the art's pretty nice. It's it's a lot bigger than the package for the Sork and Throw set I reviewed last time. Um, and as you can see, these are the three uh, four-figure gift sets you can get. The one with Kyrem, as I just said. And there's White Kyrem with Axu, Cryagonal, and uh, Viriz Virizian? Virizian. There's Black Kyrem, uh, Boldor, Cabellion, and Scraggy, which is possibly the set that I most want, but it wasn't there. Um, and then it advertises the Pokedex again. But yeah, um, same deal as last time, really. You get ID tags with them, which have like odd. Um, I don't even know how to describe them, odd like sort of markings at the back of the card that you then scan to the Pokedex and then it tells you. Um, although, as I've said before, the Pokedex seems oddly lo-fi, as in it has sort of a old calculator type screen. Right, I'm going to open this box and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. And uh, as you see, I've unpacked them all. Um, these are the ID tags that you get with them. Same as before. Oh, now I've realised you see like an image of Imolga on the Imolga one. I wonder. Can you see Stunfisk? Ah, yes. That's pretty cool. You can see like a side view, I think, and a front view of them. Uh, this is the Terrakian one, sort of, yeah that's a bit weird, kind of see him-ish, um, on the Kyram one, yeah, standard fare, uh, you see his um, weight and height in both things, he's Kyram in all languages apparently. Uh, something I did notice on the back uh, is that apparently in other countries these are known as sort of precious metals. That's terrakium, viridium, and uh, cobalium. Maybe like, I don't know, maybe they're not named after precious metals or anything, but they do very much sound like them. Um, anyway, right, on to the figures. That's probably why you bought the thing. Let's start with Imolga. Imolga is the adorable, like, uh, squirrely, flying squirrel Pokemon. Has a tail uh, that's slightly movable. Uh, has his flaps open. Very good detailing. Uh, as with all the other Pokemon figures, really, paint is applied lovely. It's got a nice shine to the yellow there. Uh, even detailed inside its ears, which is pretty impressive, you know, because in the game all you really get is kind of that and sort of it moves about a bit. Um, so the fact that they've detailed all of it is really nice. Uh, that does look like just a sort of black paint job on the back, but they have put little details as in the uh, piece of yellow at the base of its tail. Uh, one thing with Imolga, it's hard to make it stand up. Aha! Right, next, Stunfisk, oh god, um, Stunfisk, yeah, he's the sort of, he looks, well you know what he looks like, I think you can all guess, uh, he does not have, in the, oh well, he does have the sort of separating lines on his tail, but they're quite hard to see. Um, the yellow's nice and all, but it's a bit too shiny. 
But yeah, Stunfisk is very small, very little figure. Well, you know, he does the job. He looks as dopey as he does in the game. Paint application is pretty much spot on. There's, well, okay, there's there's a bit going on to the brown there, but you know. Um, but yeah, not much to say about Stunfisk. Really, it looks exactly like he does in the game. Um, I was the low point of this pack because I like him Mulga. Mulga's cool. Stunfisk, not so much. Uh, right on to Terrakion. My favourite of the three roaming uh, deer type Pokemon. He's cool. I'm I'm I pretty much bought the pack for him and Kyrem, really. Um but yeah, I do not remember the things on his shoulders, but they were probably there. Uh he is the last of the three you encounter in black and white two, I believe. Cause I caught him not that recently ago. Uh not that long ago. Because I'm really slow at playing that game. Um, he's very detailed. Again, paint application is brilliant. Uh, his eyes are, you know, pretty pretty damn detailed. That one seems slightly... No, no, actually no. They seem, seem the same. Got the mark underneath and stuff. They've even gone to the trouble of, like, putting in his hooves and, you know... Um, one thing I do like about the whole aspect of Pokemon figures is that unless you have the Pokedex 3D Pro, which I do not have, um, you basically sort of get a 3D view of a Pokemon you only really see in one or two angles in the game. Um, but the reason this is 15 is because you get three figures. That's pretty good. That's I mean, if it's six for two, then... You know, it'd be about nine for three anyway. But you also get him, and he's pretty big compared to all of them. See? Um, also, he has movable joints. And if I can get this small piece of plastic out there, right. Okay. Now, one thing you'll notice, I didn't really pick much up on much in uh, black and white, is the fact that his wings are really disproportionate. Um, again, I think this may be because the angle of the game, sort of putting like that, I always assumed that wing there was folded back a bit. But, he's really non-symmetrical. Um, but you know, that's, that's an interesting thing, I think, because up until now, really, all the, all the previous gens for Gen 5 was, um, very symmetrical. Uh, although, I mean, there are a few in Gen 5 that are non-symmetrical. I mean, going back to uh, Sork, who I have here. He has that brow thing on one side and then nothing on the other. Um, so, you know, it, it's an interesting thing to see that they're not totally symmetrical. Now, unpacking this guy, his legs came off. That, that's no bad thing, it's fine. It's because uh, they're articulated. As I'll demonstrate. See? Um, although there is one complaint. Kyrem does not stand up. Well, or rather you have to pose his legs down so it looks like he's sniffing the ground, basically, like that. Um, which I'm pretty sure was his pose in the game anyway. He's pretty damn detailed. Uh, he looks like he does in the game. Uh, but yeah, also his arms are movable as well, which I was very pleased with, because it's a detail I didn't really expect. Well, okay, his... This one doesn't seem to be as poseable. But, on the whole, he's quite a poseable figure. He's big, he's quite chunky. Um, he's, you know, the main legendary. Well, he's the unifying legendary, rather, because, um, Kyo uh... Reshiram and Zekrom were the two legendaries, and then he's like the big Rayquaza of this generation. That's probably the best way to uh, describe it. He has little things at the tips of his wings. I'm not sure why, and I'm not sure how he flies, because he wouldn't be able to. Um, yeah, Kyrem is pretty damn kick-ass. He looks really cool. As I said, you will have to pose him like that 
so he can be placed. But all in all, this pack is pretty damn good. It's um, a lot cheaper than the other one because this is reasonably priced. As such, I would give this pack. Um, I'd give it an eight point five. It's still a bit pricey. And um, Stunfisk. I've yet to find anyone who legitimately likes Stunfisk apart from possibly the strategy of using him in battles. I think he's electric in water or grown in water. I can't remember. No, grown in water, yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know. He, he is, he's the main disappointment of the pack. However, Terrakion is really cool. I'm not sure what you guys think of him. Let me know in the comments if you'd like. Um, I hope to get my hands on the other two packs because I really do like the roaming legendaries uh, and hope to get the Kabelion one really as soon as possible. So, until next time, thank you very much for watching and subscribe, possibly. That would be nice. You don't have to, but, you know, all the same. Goodbye.